Hello there. I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Now, I should explain a little bit about this show and what it is. I like nice things. Good movies. Enticing games. Anime treats. Engaging comics. All that good stuff. This is where I celebrate it with you. But this is more than a simpering love fest, because there are no perfect movies, games, or anime. And we are not shy of discussing that. What we are, though, is fair. With that in mind, let's turn our attentions to today's topic, Galaxy Quest. <laughs> Released in 1999, Galaxy Quest can best be described as a parody of Star Trek, crossed with a Trek actor's worst nightmare. <laughs> but what am I doing telling you about it? Let's dig in and see for ourselves! We open to a Galaxy Quest convention, viewing the first part of a lost two-parter, before we cut to the crew in their dressing slash green room. Matter once, damn it now, look at me, look at me! Jason Naismith, alias Commander Peter Quincy Taggart, arrives, and proceeds to milk the attention like a rock star. They really do love him. But oh dear, his bubble is abruptly burst when two trolls proceed to rag on him, and his entire mood shifts. Nate Smith falls asleep drunk in front of an old syndicated rerun, and is awoken the next morning by a bunch of aliens he met the day before. These are Thermians, who are being hunted by warlord Rothar Saris. After the destruction of their homeworld, they turn to the Commander to help them negotiate peace. Naismith takes it as just another job. Well, I admire his professionalism at least. Subsequently, he's whisked off to their ship, a real working version of the NSCA Protector. But this is no mere fan geek fantasy. The rest of the crew are opening some tech hardware store. And now Naismith must assemble his old crewmates for the mission of a lifetime. All of you wish to go to the ship? Yes, we wish to go to the ship. And so our heroes board the Protector too. But then, the true nature of the mission is revealed. Saris wants the Omega-13 device. He found out about this mysterious apparatus from the Protector's former commander. But what is it? What does it do? Stay tuned to find out. And after one disastrous exchange, comes another. The Protector flees right into a minefield. And no, they don't manage to evade the mines. They take a lot of hits. Because of this, their fuel ball is damaged. They find another one on a nearby planet. They manage to find and even recover a fuel ball from a refinery. But not everyone makes it back to the Protector. The commander awakes to the attentions of a curious beast. But could they use the teleporter to retrieve him? Ooh, nasty. Fred Kwan embraces his role and operates the teleporter to bring the commander back on board. But it's out of the frying pan and into the fire. I said I'm not the commander. Jason Naismith reveals that it's all an act. The NSEA Protector is naught but a tiny model, their teleportation effect no more than Christmas tree lights on a chroma keyed background. All an edifice, for the purposes of entertainment in the 1980s. But is there nothing of these characters in our heroes? And so, his victory believed complete, Saris returns to his ship. But then, our team mount an offensive of their own. The team split up. Fred and his team secure the engineering deck. It's the simple things in life, you treasure. Dane and Quellek save the barracks level. But shock! Quellek is fatally wounded. This brings out the warrior in our Shakespearean thess. Strangely enough, that's my fighting style as well. But it works a little better for him. The commander and Gwen the Bridge Bunny have to run a gauntlet to get to the core shutdown switch. And the helmsman, Tommy, relearns his craft. And it shows, as the minds that once thwarted him, 
now form the basis of a masterful gambit. But oh dear, Saris survived. And with his last ounces of strength, Naismith activates the Omega-13. General Saris wanted the Omega-13 because he believed it to be a bomb, capable of destroying anything within a 13 light year radius. What it actually does is reverse his time by 13 seconds, enough time to retake one bad decision. The commander uses it to unmask Saris and save his crew. And so our movie ends with a triumphant crash landing at GalaxyCon. So that was Galaxy Quest, and you know what? I'm going to put this into the House of Love. It's a funny, life-affirming roller coaster ride of a movie, and it teaches us that in a universe of infinite possibilities, there's always a little bit of you in every character you play. And I should know. So thanks for watching, and join me next time for more fun and frolics. Bye now!